Hi, this is Mike Queen from WinCNC, and today I'm going to try to do a couple of videos that will show how to do a different kind of a two-reel sweep. In the first video, I'm going to use the the line, the draw line, polyline tool, the rectangle, the draw rectangle, and the create fillets to generate the cross section for our two-rail sweep. Uh, I'm in the end. I'm going to create this uh, sort of like a an inverted Mexican sombrero, but it's not really. It's a it's a chip and dip bowl. You place a bowl full of dip here in a center ring and stack chips up around the outside. So the first thing I want to do is is click on this. I can go here and I can set my point right here if I want to because that says X0 Y0 there. But I want to do it from here so I just set X0 Y0 and click add. I just set a point right there. If I go here and go 90 degrees, now by the way, this is zero angle out here. This is 90. This is 180. And this is 270 down this way. So anywhere in between there, you know, you could do 45, you can do all kinds of different angles. But I'm only going to be working with uh, 90. Uh, 0 and 270. So I'm going to do a 90 degree angle which means straight up and I'm going to do it 1.9 because my material is 2 inches and I don't want to cut all the way out of my material. So I'll do that. You can see where the line's drawn. I'm going to go 0 angle because that's out this way and I'm going to go 0.5 add and I could have dragged out there a half inch and, and did that and it would have worked but it's much easier to do it accurately this way. I want to go 270. Remember that's straight down. And I don't know how far down I want to go. I want to go a quarter of an inch from the bottom. Well I happen to know that it's 1.9 because I drew that line 1.9 up so I'll go 1.9 and now all I've got to do is subtract 0.25 away from it to stop there and put an equal sign. That says it's 1.65. So I'll trust that and click Add. You can see that it stopped a quarter of an inch away. Okay, so I want to draw a 13 inch more line here. And I could do that if I wanted to by, by just dragging this out to here and clicking Enter because that says the length is 13 inches. But I don't want to do that. I want to stay with this. I'll go zero angle again and just do 13 on my length and add. Now I want to go up again and this time I know I remember it was 1.65 and add. I want to go straight right again so that's a zero angle and I want to go 0.5 inches again and add. Now I want to come straight back down to the bottom so I'll do a 270 angle again and I'm going to do 1.9 because I know that's how far it was back to the bottom. Add. Now I want to go back and close the shape and I could go here and click this if I wanted to but I can also do a 180, 180 degree angle which is this way and tell it to go 14 inches and it should come over here and snap to that end over there. So I'll go add and so you can see that it doesn't give me any more options here that means that it closed the shape. So here would be my beginning of my chip and dip bowl. Well that doesn't have the center sections in it so in order to do that I'm going to use this the rectangle tool and I'm going to create a rectangle that's 0.5 wide and 1.5 tall and create and I'll close this because I want two of these so I can just copy this one and paste it back in again so I will 
control C for copy, control V for add. Okay, so now I have two of them. You can see that uh, there's one over top of the other because of the darker line underneath of it. Now I've only got one of them selected, so I want to move that one four inches to the right. So I'm going relative, in other words, whatever number I put in here, that's how far it'll move away from where it is now. So I only want to move on X, and I'll go four inches. And it still leaves the other one where it was. So I'll close this, happy with that. Now I want to select the other one, and I want to group these together. So I'll hold down Control so that they move together. I want to hold down Control and hit G. Okay, so now what I want to do is choose this one, Align Selected Objects. So I want to go there. Now I've got my objects that I want to center. So I hold down Shift and click the object that I want to center them in and this says align object to selection. It doesn't say object to selection, it's align to selection. It means align the object that you had chosen first to the selection that you made last. So I want to do it center left and right. I don't want to do up and down because it would move it up. I don't want to do this. I want to do this one. And I don't want to do align a material because that would do it in the center of the material. I want to do it to this object. So I want to choose this one. And now, if I close this and I hit the F key, you can see it zooms out and you can see that it's in the center of this object. Now, that's not going to work correctly because you can see that those aren't part of this shape. So in order to make them part of that shape, I have to weld them. So I'll use the weld and as long as they're all selected, I can hit this, and it deleted the parts that were outside and or in, all the way inside or whatever, only kept the outside. Now that's all one shape. Okay, now to do the next step, I want to go to node editing. I push the N key, and I want to hover over this line and hit the D key, that will delete this line. It'll make it an open vector. So now it's an open vector. Uh, I want to round these corners, but I'm going to wait until after the next step to do that. Next thing I want to do is come up here and draw another rectangle. Uh, I want to start this at minus 0.2 inches on X and 0 on Y and that's so that it'll start over here and I'm going to end it on the other side and I'm going to make this 14 no point, uh, 0.4 inches wide and a height of 1.65 and I'll create this, and now if we do the F key again, i close it, hit the F key again, and you can see that it sticks out the same amount on both sides of this. Okay, so what I want to do now is I'm going to select this rectangle, and you can see that there's a line here at the bottom again. I want to go back to node editing mode. I want to hover over this line again, and I hit the D key to delete that line. So now I've got two different open shapes here that are overlaying each other. What I want to do now is here I want to delete this line, cut it away, and trim this one away, and now I want to move to the other side, do the same thing on the other side. I want to delete this one and cut this one away. Okay, now I can close this and hit the F key again and I want to delete this line because I don't need it anymore. As you can see I have added to the shape. This is all one open vector. It's not closed because it doesn't have a line across the bottom. But now this is all joined into one thing and that's what I want. Okay, now a little bit more 
and I'll be done with this. So what I want to do now is use this create fillets and I'm going to take this half inch one. You notice I've done doing a half inch rate tool radius for a fillet and I'll go down here in this corner you can see the little check mark there that means that I can do it on this corner. Okay, here, 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 and here. Okay, now I want to change to quarter inch, and I want to come up to this corner. Here, didn't get to check mark it there. Here, don't want to do this one. That one's the one I want to. I want to leave that one square. Here, 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 and here. And now that's complete. And I hope you learned something from this uh, video. As I said, it's part one of two. And on the next one, I'm going to use this profile that I drew right here as the cross section for this bowl. Um, you can see that uh, if you drew down and across and up and down and across and up and down and across and up, You'd see, you can see there that uh, that's going to be the cross section for this bowl. So I'm going to end this tutorial here and please watch the next video so that you can see how I use this to create the bowl. Thanks.